Good morning.
Good morning and welcome to Hollywood United Methodist Church. I am Rev Hannah and I'm so excited that you're here to worship with us today. Both those of you who are in our pews and those of you who are joining us from home, we hope you're excited to worship our Lord this morning. It is so exciting as well to have some special family members here to uh, be here for the baptism of Caleb this morning. So we're very excited about that. So let us join with one another in worship. This morning, we want to invite our kids to come up and join us to talk. We are so excited that Kevin and April are able to get the rest they need this morning, and I get to hang out with y'all for a minute. So, 
I heard a rumor that somebody might be starting school again this week. Is anybody here starting school? You are? Mm -hmm. What grade are you going to be? Uh, fifth. Fifth, wow. How about you? Seventh. Seventh, they're going to be starting seventh. How about y'all? Kindergarten. Kindergarten? Kindergarten is the funnest. Yay. Anybody else? Are you going to be starting school? First grade. First grade. That's awesome. Just a year older. So you got to have super fun kindergarten. So this morning, I was wondering, do you know who liked, who in the Bible liked school so, 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 so much that they just never wanted to leave? Do you know? There's usually like a right answer in church. <laughs> so if you had to guess what's the right answer in church, what do you think it would be? Yeah. Jesus, yeah. So when Jesus was just 12 years old, so a little bit older than most of you, when Je they, are, they, they are not, okay. I got it. <laughs> How, are, are you the same age as Jesus? Yes. So when Jesus was Maddie's age, he, <laughs> he and his family, they went to Jerusalem. And when it was time to leave, and his parents looked in the back seat of the car, guess who wasn't there? Jesus. Jesus wasn't there. And they were like, where would he go? Where would he go? And so they searched and they searched, and they looked in his friend's house, but he wasn't there. And they looked at his cousin's house, but he wasn't there. So it says after they looked for him for three days, for three days, they found him in the temple sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. So Jesus just wanted to hang out with the teachers and learn and learn and learn. So as you go back to school this week, I hope that you take Jesus with you and that kind of curiosity and that passion to know and to understand and to get as many facts as you can. And remember that when you go to school, and you enjoy school, you're being just like Jesus, right? So that's something that you can do this week to be like Jesus, is be a great student, ask good questions, and learn as much as you can, okay? Can we pray? Dear Jesus, we thank you that you set such a good example for us as a student. Help us to love and love to learn as much as you did. Help us all be safe and have a really fantastic school year. Amen. Thank you, y'all. And now, and now we'd like for the Reed family to come forward. Speaking of going to school, Precious is leaving for Cal Berkeley very shortly. And we are so proud of you. And I'm not gonna look at your dad because then I'm gonna cry. So I'm not gonna do that. But we've asked, they've asked me to pray for you. So is that okay? All right. Let's just, if you can put your hand on Precious or on someone whose hand is on Precious, let us pray. Gracious God, you have given this young woman so many talents and gifts. We praise you for that. We praise you for this family. And we ask for your blessing to be upon Precious as she begins this new adventure in life, college. We ask that you order her steps that she might know exactly how to proceed and how to follow you in the midst of a brand new world in Berkeley. Surround her with your grace and your love and always infuse with her your hope for all that she can be and all that she will be. We give you thanks and praise. We pray this in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, we're so proud of you.
And now we'd like for the Corley family to come forward. Caleb, I get to put some water on you today. Step on that side. Boy, you're a big boy. No, no, let's. Vamos a poner la mesa acá. Y esto allá. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you want Caleb? That's right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. Right, right here is fine for now. Oh, right here is fine. We've got, we've got some, we've got some other stuff to do before we actually get to the baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift to us, offered without price. I present Caleb James Corley for baptism. I have some questions for your parents, Caleb, if that's okay with you. <laughs> On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Okay. Thank you. Can I have some questions for the congregation? Congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And if you do, say, we do. And I'm going to ask you a question, then I'll do the answer. I'll represent us. <laughs> will, you, will we nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Caleb now before you in your care? Let us pray. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Caleb with a community of love and forgiveness that Caleb may grow in their service to others. We will pray for him that he may true, be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness that throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. What do you think, Caleb? Is this okay? It's okay? Oh, <laughs> when we're done, you get to pick out a shell. Ooh. Caleb James, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water in the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Oh. And all God's people said? Amen. Okay. So let's walk. Will you walk with Reverend Kathy? I would like to introduce you to the newest preparatory member of Hollywood United Methodist Church, Caleb James Corley. each other with a sign of God's peace. Uh, welcome each other to this place. We are glad you're here.
What a gift for us this morning to be able to join together in prayer, to welcome the newest member of our church, Caleb, to offer blessings to our own wonderful precious, um, and for all our young people preparing for what's next. We're just really glad everyone's here today to join in this moment. I invite you now to prepare yourself for a time of prayer, so let's take a deep breath. Let it out. Let's do one more. Won't you join me in prayer? Gracious one, you have granted so much to us. You have made us in your image, each and every one. You invited us to be stewards of creations and co-creators of the beloved community. You sent your son to walk with us to guide us and to teach us what it means to love. Yet we confess that we often find ourselves unsure in our purpose. Given by you the freedom to make powerful decisions, humanity often choose the wrong one. Give us wisdom to resist hate where we see it, to speak up against violence, to refuse war and its trappings. Help us to build relationships of empathy and understanding with those we do not know, and in each of us in our own ways, to be what is needed, and small as insignificant as we may be, to be those who help repair the breach. Intervene when we seem like we're going to make decisions out of fear and anger and guide us to a path of people who make everlasting peace. We thank you for this church community and for the love that lives here. Bless Caleb and his family this morning. May we truly surround him in a community of care as he begins his journey with you. We thank you for the gifts of baptism and new life. Be with our neighbors who are unhoused here in Hollywood and those who are vulnerable in other ways to the intense heat wave that we are in. Keep them safe and provide options for relief. I pray this morning for the Hollywood Food Coalition that, that is one of our wonderful partners, the Community Coalition. They're currently running low on rice and need of donations and we pray that you will bring to them what they need so that we can serve our neighbors adequately. We pray for peace in all places where there is war in the Ukraine and in Palestine. We pray for the return of hostages, and we pray for the end of taking of innocent lives, both in war and here on our own streets. Bring healing to those facing illness and uncertainty, and comfort us as we continue to mourn the loss of Rick Loya and pray for his family. Bring solace and comfort to Mark Allen on the loss of his mom, and be with Natalie in this moment of deep struggle. God, guide all the teachers and administrators and students who are returning to school this week. May it be a powerful and transformative year filled with hope and possibility. May it be a safe place in every way for everyone. And may they learn as much as possible. There are many more prayers that live in our hearts and minds here today and we offer them to you now in a moment of silence. All that we have comes from you, and for this we offer our thanks. All that we are is shaped by you, and we pray that you will continue to guide us. We lift up these prayers to you, knowing that you can carry the heaviest weights, and that you are always with us, alongside us in the journey. We are grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, who lived for us, who loved us, and who died for us, and who rose so that we might know that through you, eternity is possible, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, happy Sunday, church family. It's time to get out those phones. The one time that you're supposed to have your phones out, let's go ahead and scan that QR code if you would. And just let us know you're here today. You can drop your name in there. If you'd like to be on the email list, you can also put, there's a place for your email. And more importantly, if you have a prayer request, please share with, with us uh, what, what, what you'd like and the pastoral team actually gets those every Monday and we pray over them throughout the week. If you are a new person, this is your first time here, I just wanna say a special welcome Thank you for sharing your morning with us. My name is Devin, and if you come see me at the, in the courtyard at the welcome table outside, I have a little welcome bag for you. So after church, come see me. Today we have a special guest organist. I would love you to help me welcome him. David Wheatley is here today. <laughs> John's on vacation, and um, we appreciate you being here. Today's CrossFlix film, and I can't believe we're halfway through our CrossFlix sermon series, is uh, Rev. Kathy's preaching on Oppenheimer, and I hear it's explosive. <laughs> Full of dad jokes. Um, the next week, <laughs> Friday liked it. Uh, the next week, Rev. Hannah is gonna be preaching on the film, Rustin. If you are interested in starting a small group, uh, I'm the person to talk to, so you can talk to me after church. But if you're interested in starting and or joining, there's a QR code that you can scan up there, also at the welcome table. Just let me know you're interested and how I can contact you and we can talk about it and uh, find out what you're interested in, uh, what groups we have and what you're interested in participating in. Also, through the whole month of August, we are collecting backpacks, and you can see our first little group of backpacks are starting to come in. We're gonna collect those all the way up through homecoming, which is September 22nd, and all of these backpacks and school supplies are going to be for children in need in the LAUSD school system. So, while you're out shopping, if you can, think about picking up a couple extra. Then, at the end of August, in a couple weeks, uh, our United Women in Faith group is having a pot potluck, and they want to invite anyone that's interested in being a part of the group to come. Sign-ups are at the welcome table, but uh, this is a great way to figure out what the group is about, what the outreach programs and all the volunteer opportunities that they're going to be doing throughout the year, and also have some lunch after church. So that's happening on the 25th of August. A lot of things are on this new event flyer that we just printed and put in the pew pockets in front of you. So if you haven't grabbed one, take one home. This is for you. It goes all the way through Christmas. <laughs> and Christmas will be here soon enough. But uh, we've got some great things planned, and we'd love you to participate as you're able. And all of these things that we have planned, all the outreach opportunities, all the events, they all are provided by you through your prayers, your service, your presence and your volunteering and your gifts. So as the ushers come forward and we put up a QR code for online giving, please give as you're able so we can continue to grow this ministry here in the heart of Hollywood. Thank you for being here today.
The reading today is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full of cord, accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and, on, and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Holy wisdom, holy words, thanks be to God. This morning we continue our annual Summer Crosswick Sermon Series with a film that is not on our banner, Oppenheimer. Uh, let me explain how that exactly happened. My older child, James, had been lobbying me, I think since the day after the film came out last year, to include Oppenheimer in our sermon series. My reply, it's three hours long. I don't have three hours to watch a film. So this past spring, as the staff generally does, we arm wrestled over which ones to include in the Crossflick series, and it did not include Oppenheimer. Well, then I went to Europe, and suddenly I had much more than three hours to watch films. And I just hate it when my kids are right. So this morning I'm preaching on Oppenheimer. As the title suggests, this is not a sweeping look at the coming of the atomic age, but rather it's one man's life story. Oppenheimer is a flawed human whom we follow from his time as a student in Europe and his early struggles with depression and anxiety to the founding of the first theoretical physics department in the United States, to his recruitment to run the Manhattan Project, to the successful building and deployment of the first nuclear bombs, and his eventual, eventual fall from grace with accusations of un-American activity made by a jealous political rival. Oppenheimer is portrayed as a person of hubris, driven by ego and intellectual ambition, willing to abandon his work union organizing, for example, in order to take a leading role in the Manhattan Project. Uh, and he's also a serial philanderer, to put it mildly, and all of his actions, both personal and professional, have consequences. How many of you have seen Oppenheimer? Let's watch the trailer. We imagine a future. And our imaginings horrify us. They won't fear it. Until they understand it. And they won't understand it. Until they've used it. Theory will take you only so far. I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon. But we have no choice. about what 
what's happening here. Is anyone ever going to tell the truth about what's happening here? Now, Oppenheimer posits this question during his sham security clearance interrogation in 1954. But the question has greater implications for Oppenheimer, for history, and for us. Was the development of nuclear bombs inevitable? Oppenheimer thinks that Nazi Germany had about an 18-month head start on the United States in creating one. He takes his team's calculations that there is a possibility that a chain reaction might not stop and subsequently destroy the Earth in its entirety. He takes those calculations to Albert Einstein to see if they are correct. And their conversation goes something like this. Einstein says, well, you'll get to the truth. And Oppenheimer says, and if the truth is catastrophic? Einstein says, then you will stop and you will share your findings with the Nazis so neither side destroys the world. Oppenheimer's team recalculates and comes back with the reassuring news that the likelihood that this apocalyptic forecast of an uncontrolled chain reaction would be near zero. Not zero, near zero. And when asked to give a name to the atomic test in the desert outside Los Alamos, Oppenheimer responds by making use of the poet John Donne's invocation of the Christian God. Batter my heart, three-personed God. The test is named Trinity. After the first plutonium bomb explodes, Oppenheimer gazes in awe at the terrible power which has been unleashed. He quotes the Hindu sacred text, now I am become death destroyer of worlds. Our epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi stands in stark contrast, seeking to unite and not to destroy. Now it's clear from Paul's tone that there are factions within the congregation at Philippi. Paul doesn't address those factions directly. Instead, he sings about the glory of Jesus Christ. Paul is bold to tell this divided congregation to adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Paul tells them that he wants them to inculcate the spirit of Christ, to think like Christ thinks, to do what Christ did and what Christ does. Retired Bishop Will William Williman said that the pagan world looked at the early church and marveled that there was a group of people that was not organized as the world organized itself on the basis of family or gender, class or money. The surrounding Roman culture said, look how they love one another. Alas, too often, he writes, the world looks at congregations today, it exclaims, hey, look at how much they fight with one another. Sadly, we Methodists are a good example of that. The bottom line is that Paul is telling the Philippians and Paul is telling us that we need to focus on loving each other and walking together in the same direction towards Jesus Christ, following his example for our lives. For Jesus, that meant giving up whatever glory he had, and he had it all. Glory, power, wisdom, you name it, he had it, and he let it all go. Jesus became as we are. Jesus became one of us and then went to a place most of us are unwilling to go. He became a servant to all humanity. In a conversation that Oppenheimer had with the Danish physicist Niels Bohr, Bohr said, the power that you are about to reveal will forever outlive the Nazis, and the world is not prepared. And Oppenheimer responded, you can't lift the stone without being ready for the snake that's revealed. To which Bohr replied, we have to make the politicians understand this isn't a new weapon. This is a new world. So then was Oppenheimer being calculating? Or was his hubris so overwhelming that he believed his plutonium bomb would be a purely academic discovery never to be used against people or places. The film tracks as much. 
At first, Oppenheimer seemed obsessed with beating the Nazis in its creation. But when the test worked and his genius was affirmed, he slowly began to realize that his had not been a scientific pursuit, but instead the creation of a tool of war. Now, by this point, the European theater of World War II had ended, but the Pacific theater was still active. It was only after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki 79 years ago this past week that Oppenheimer began to be plagued by qualms of conscience and recognized the horrific consequences of his scientific advances. In the end, his ethical concerns were not able to control or direct the bomb's use. The film closes with Oppenheimer confessing to Einstein that his fears of a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world have become a reality. Consider the hubris of Oppenheimer versus the humility of Christ. Both have chain reactions. Here again what Paul writes, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look to your own interests, not to your own interests rather, but to the interests of others. And so I ask you family, if, what if we chose this passage on which to base the chain reactions in our lives? What if we decided that selfish ambition and conceit have no place in our lives? If we do, then that frees up space in our souls to truly look to the interests of others. Think about it, what if we gave up worrying about what people think of us? What if we adopted Stuart Smalley's affirmation, and yes, this is dating me to Al Franken on SNL, I can't help it. Stuart Smalley said, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. When we do that, then we have time to sit with a friend who's grieving a loss. And when she is whole again, she might show an act of kindness to another person who is hurting. That's a chain reaction of goodness that is based in allowing the same mind to be in us that is in Christ Jesus, one born of humility and grace. These exponentially increasing chain reactions of goodness will ultimately be what, bring, what builds the kingdom of God, the beloved community here on earth. There's an anthology by the late Japanese theologian Kosuke Koyama entitled Three Mile an Hour God. Koyama grew up in Japan during the Second World War amidst the devastation caused by the two atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Many of the stories in his book remind the reader about the dangers of the human desire to be in control and to assert power over whatever can be asserted over the planet and others with all of the destructive consequences which this brings. But Koyama's most famous insight is that Christians need to learn to walk at the speed which God walks at, refusing to be a people who are hurried. And what is that speed that God walks at, you might ask? God walks at the speed of the incarnation. God becomes human in Jesus, so God walks at the speed in which a human being can walk about three miles an hour. Koyama concludes that God walks slowly because God is love. If God is not love, God would have gone much faster. But love has its speed. Family, we all have our speed and our choices. Do we allow our words and our actions to have a positive or a negative chain reaction in our lives? Are we paying attention when we pick up the rock, or do we even care that the snake might bite another person? How can we walk at God's speed? When asked, is anyone ever gonna tell the truth around here? Let us answer with the resounding yes. When Killian Murphy won his Best Actor Oscar, he dedicated it to the peacemakers. Murphy said, we made a film about the man who created the atomic bomb, and for better or for worse, we are all living in Oppenheimer's world. So I'd really like to dedicate this to the peacemakers everywhere. Let there be peace on earth 
and let it begin with me. Amen. If you would like to receive communion, you're invited to come down to one of these first two rows and be seated. Pastor Bridie will then consecrate communion, and uh, you are welcome to receive. You do not have to be a member of this church or of any church. You simply have to have the desire to receive. I will be off the next three Sundays, coming back for my final Sunday with you on September 8th. So I hope that, uh, yes, there's a Bruce concert involved. What can I say? Actually... <laughs> There's two of them. So, uh, but I look forward to celebrating the ministry that we have built here together on September 8th. I invite you now to go forth and discover new ways that you can be peacemakers in this world. Go forth now to love and serve the world. Amen. <laughs>